Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and it's Tuesday and I'm happy to be here. It was a very sunny day here in Northern California. Lovely, lovely spring day and I... um I was very happy with it. Uh, I'm also happy to be here with you, as always. I'm happy to be talking about books. I'm happy to be bringing you another author interview. As I mentioned at the end of the last episode, I have a returning in, uh, intern, uh, returning intern, returning author <laughs> joining me this week, and that is uh, our first author to return for the third time. Third time's the charm. I don't know. Uh, the author is Jason Pellegrini. Jason was actually the third author I ever interviewed on this podcast, and if you're interested in hearing his first two episodes, if you haven't heard those already, he was on the first time to talk about his novel, Booth, on um, in May of 2017, and that is episode 15. He then came back in October of 2017, episode 32, to talk about his novella, The Cool Kids. So if you want to check those out, that is, uh, those are the episodes that you need to look for. Today we are talking about his new novella. It's called If I Could Have Lived Another Day, and the description is as follows. In 2005, Dan Brady had very little idea where his life was going. But unlike other young adults who might be more accepting that things will fall into place, Dan wasn't content with waiting around for life to just figure itself out. He needed to find his purpose, and it would be in the last place he ever thought imaginable. Dan would find everything he was looking for. The day that Dan met the woman that would one day become Tina Brady, everything had come together and fallen into place. He had finally found his purpose. Dan and Tina's love was a simple love, not filled with dramatics or defined by a big, over-the-top moment. It was their own, and therefore it was the greatest love of all. It was the one they were happy to share with one another for the rest of their lives. But unfortunately, the rest of their their life together would not be the long journey they had planned it to be. At just 33 years old, Tina was diagnosed with a terminal illness, and before Dan could even process what was happening to his wife, he would have to bury her. The night after Tina's funeral, Dan would find himself lost in a grief that had no end in sight. How could he be expected to go on in life without the person who had completed him and made him who he was? Was there any amount of strength that could give him, that could pull him from his despair? But Tina had one last gift to give, and that night she would make sure her husband would find the light he would need to lead him out of the dark. So again, that is the description of If I Could Have Lived Another Day by Jason Pellegrini. It is uh, his newest um, novella. And, you know, that there's some pretty heavy topics being addressed in this novella. And you may have listened to that description and thought, whew, that doesn't sound like the most interesting, or not interesting, but the most uplifting of reads. And yet, yet... It's not as dreary as it sounds. I know that sounds like a backhanded compliment, but Jason does a good job of um, weaving the story together in such a way that you get this, p- these pictures of Dan and Tina's life together as they, um, so they find out about the diagnosis, but then as they go through the process and before Tina dies, you get a lot of flashbacks, you get a lot of um, backstory as to their relationship. And there's a lot of really lovely relationship moments in there and there is it it it's ultimately a book of hope it's a book of light in um some of those darker places in our lives and yeah so it's it it's not 
don't don't despair. It is not as dreary as you might think from uh, that description. So, and Jason and I talk about that in the interview as well. So let's go ahead and turn now to that interview with Jason Pellegrini about his new novella, If I Could Have Lived Another Day. Hi, Jason. Welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for having me again. Again, actually, this is your third time on the podcast. I think you're the first author to come back uh, for a third time. So you, I don't know, you get a gold star or something. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. It's, uh, it was, I've always had a good time talking to you. So why not come back? Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. We are here to talk about your new novella. Um, but before we get to that, if you could, uh, share a little bit about yourself for the people who maybe haven't heard your previous, um, interviews or need a refresher. Well, I'm, uh, an independent author from uh, Long Island, New York. My latest work, If I Could Have Lived Another Day, is my fourth release. Um, that's really it. <laughs> I mean, I can think of. <laughs> so as you mentioned, um, the new work is If I Had Lived Another Day. Can you give us um, a, a bit of a premise of the story? Well, it's about a uh, a, a man who watches his wife you know, be diagnosed and go through, you know, uh, terminal cancer um, and the coping of that, you know, that experience from his perspective, I guess, and then him having to face, you know, life without her once she's gone and, uh, you know, what that might mean for somebody who, you know, is now a widower. Mm -hmm. A fairly young widower at that. Um, what was your inspiration for this story? Um, so kind of like with the cool kids where I had, with the cool kids, I had captioned a picture of my god kids, the cool kids. And I was like, that was a good name. I wonder what this story could be about. And then it spawned from there. It was the same thing with uh, if I could have lived another day. I remember walking to the bookstore and I was in my own little world, not even paying attention to probably what was you know, on the shelves. And um, that title just popped in my head. And um, I wanted it to be like a really short story about an elderly man finding a note from his wife after she had, had gone through cancer. Um, I wanted it to be for like, my website, you know, offered for free. And then it morphed into something completely different, um, which ended up being the book. Um, but the inspiration was the title just came to me. I, I liked the way it sounded. And I'm like, all right, I like I want to use this title. Let me come up with a story idea. And, and I had one idea that turned into a, a, to, to a completely different story. But it still, you know, fit the title. Right. Interesting. And in the dedication of the book, you dedicate it to, I think it's your cousin. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Um, and it, was her story any part of the inspiration for this story or did that, that come in in any way? No, my, my cousin was killed in an automobile accident. Um, nothing to do with, nothing to do with cancer, but uh, I like to think that, you know, could tie in. This is more of this is a story more about losing somebody and you know finding closure in in loss, not just from cancer from anything. So I thought it was a fitting dedication. Yeah, absolutely. The um, main character in the book, it's told from his perspective, is Dan. Can you talk a little bit about what about Dan is going to resonate with readers? Well, I think he's very real. Um, he in no way is a right, you know, right. Be strong for your your wife. He is. I mean, he is, but in, uh, there's also parts where he's, he's dealing with is the fact that the woman he loves is going to die, and he, there are parts in the story where he doesn't handle that well at all. Um, because I feel like that's real. I feel like some stories like to paint. You know, men like heroic, like, you know, I'm going to be there strong as strong as can be for, you know, the woman I love. And that's just not Dan. 
he's there, but at the same time, he's being like torn apart. Um, so I think he's the fact that he's very, he's very, very real. And his relationship is, it, I feel, is very real. Let's go ahead and take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, Jason and I will be talking about the seemingly dreary nature of this story and how it really isn't dreary. Believe me, I promise you. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author Jason Pellegrini about his new novella, If I Could Have Lived Another Day. And listeners might be thinking, okay, this just sounds depressing. Why do I want to (laughs) read this book? Um, And I don't want to give away too much about the ending, but it's not as bleak as it seems. Can you talk a little bit about the, the brighter side of the book, the hope in the book? Well, that, you know, that there's something maybe beyond um, that maybe we all have a greater purpose and that things do happen for a reason. Um, As depressed, you know, as, like I said, bleak as that may seem, like your wife dying of cancer, I I believe she was 33, um, we find out that, you know, that it's, it's for a reason and um, that, you know, we all serve a greater purpose, maybe. If that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I didn't, I, I didn't want to give anything away yeah, it's, toward, toward the end. <laughs> it's hard to, 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 you know, try to explain that without being, here's how the book ends. Right. <laughs> I thought, right. I thought I, I was very proud of what I came up with at the end because I, I didn't want to, because a lot of, whether it was beta readers or readers, once it was out, they said like, in the I like feedback as, you know, the people close to me are reading. And a lot of it was like, mm-hmm. this is depressing. This is very sad. And at the end they, they were like, I, this is by far your, your, your best piece of work that like, you know, this is going to be great, which, I don't think my work's great, but it's nice to hear other people say it. <laughs> no. um, yeah, and you've got some really nice reviews on Amazon kind of saying the same things, how how beautiful the story is, how honest the story is. And, yeah, I mean, it, it is a little hard to talk about that, that it is – it's uh, well, I'll just say it's worth it. Make it to the end. Don't let some of the the harder parts of the book get to you because you know it is worth it at the end. Um, and um, it, it's very mm, satisfying, I guess, would be a, a, a non spoilerly way to <laughs> say that. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. So, how much research did you do for the book? Uh, a lot. Luckily, I have a friend and a cousin who are working in oncology, both nurses. Um, and I have a friend who works in the ER. So I was able to piece together the whole process of, you know, from the beginning of, you know, headaches showing up to, you know, a diagnosis to treatment to, you know, what the end would be like for, you know, a a patient suffering from a a brain tumor. Uh, So there was a lot that went into it. I wanted it to be as accurate as as possible because I didn't want to do anyone 
who've gotten through that or had a loved one go through that, any kind of, you know, I guess injustice is maybe not the word I'm looking for, but I didn't want to be, I didn't want to write like a sham. I wanted to be a accurate, true portrayal of, of cancer and its ugliness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And are there any autobiographical elements within the book or the characters besides the love of football? I uh, love of football. Um, uh, my Hemingway. Um, the conf- yeah. I don't know. There's a list off. Like, uh, I, like I honestly, when I found out for whom the bell tolls was a, uh, a Hemingway book, I was like, oh, I know it's a Metallica song, which is I think a reference to what the character makes in the book. Um, <laughs> yes. I think everything everything we write is somewhat autobiographical because we're we're creating humans and you know what better source to draw from when we're creating humans than than yourself um i like to think you know him and his his wife have a very back and forth bantery kind of relationship from you know the minute they meet um that playful kind of banter and you know i like to think I'm a very sarcastic person um, more times than I'm not. And, you know, I think that was a bit autobiographical. Um, just the the things that go into the characters, nothing as far as the experiences go. Mm-hmm. I, I've, per- I've personally never um, lost some, a loved one to cancer. So, okay. um, which is, is uh, shocked me that so many people like you say like I had to have gotten through this, and you know mm-hmm. I just leave it be. But I don't, but, but I I haven't. I was just I was just trying to convey like human emotion and how I think I would react if I was put in that situation. Mm-hmm. I don't think you have to go through it in any way to 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 know to or at least not know, but at least have an idea of how you know that would feel to lose somebody so close to you at such an, a young stage of uh, your life. Right, right. And um, uh, excuse me if this is too personal of a question, but uh, you're not married, correct? I'm not. Okay. Uh, so I just I only ask because this is um, a story about uh, a, a married couple. And um, so who were your – did you have role models for that relationship? Just, you know, the relationship that I would always want to have. Um, You know, I wanted to build a, what I think is a real relationship that has ups and, you know, and downs. And um, I just want, like, no, I just want something to create something that felt real and um, something that I would personally want. Okay, thank you. Um, what what then do you hope that readers will take from this book? I guess that maybe um, that it's not the end. You know, if you lose somebody, that there is. You know, we have to move forward. We have to move forward for them because I can I can I can only imagine what it's like. The when your world crashes down around you, um, and you feel like the one person like you were meant to be with is, is gone. This is really a bleak conversation. <laughs> um, well, it's a bleak topic, but <laughs> yeah, no, it, unfortunately, it's just a to- no. It, it, I want to inspire hope, and like you said at the end, I, I think I do that, and I think my character at the end you know, looks at the other side of things and, and feels, you know, hope that, you know, he'll be able to go on, whether it's for himself or for, you know, his loved one, you know, we have to carry on with their legacy because they're not here, you know, to do that. So we have to do that for them. And I think letting it, I think letting a loved one's death destroy you would be the last thing anyone would want meaning coming from the person who who died. So I think we have to Mm -hmm. continue on and fight. 
Let's go ahead and take our second break of the podcast. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and more of my interview with author Jason Pellegrini. Third time's a charm. It is his third visit to the podcast and we are talking about his new novella, If I Could Have Lived Another Day. And and to, to interject here, so, you know, it does sound like a, like we're having a very bleak conversation and it's a very bleak book, but it's not just this um, sort of dirge uh, um, inevitable trudge towards this death you um you work in the details of their relationship so we get to know them as a couple and we see the the love that they have and the humor that they have it's it's not just this whole like oh my gosh this woman is dying of cancer and everything is horrible you do work in that that relationship and the love that they have for their families and each other and you know the the life that happens around them yeah so there's this one scene where he's driving his wife. Um, by the way, his wife's name is Tina. Uh, he's, Dan is driving Tina to uh, the emergency room. And I had originally written um, that scene. You know, she she had collapsed at home. And um, he took to the emergency room and then it just continued. And I felt like the story wasn't flowing right. My friend who was reading it didn't really feel like, like she said, this is just a a bleak, you know, depressing, you know, tr- you're just following this girl to her death. Um, and then I had come up with, while he's driving her there, he, he has this flashback to a road trip they had taken. And... Um, I was, you know, building them more. It wasn't just a woman dying of cancer and her husband, you know, having to witness it, like him reliving that memory of, you know, their road trip together um, made them, you know, made them human, um, which was able, you're able to connect with them and you, you know, able to feel for their love because I feel like in the beginning I, I hadn't been able to do that. Um, but, you know, that's the process of writing. Um, a lot of times you you have like a bare bone idea and you get it on paper and you realize I need to uh, fuck this up a little bit or, uh, you know, put some meat on the bone, so to speak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'll, I'll just give people fair warning. If you're not a fan of Mbop, don't read that scene. <laughs> but nobody, do, does, but no, I, nobody knows the words. Nobody like, knows the words. I was singing I it in my head that, going, I, I have no idea what the words are. <laughs> I laughed when I put that line in, and I think my friend who was reading it too said she loved it because I know he knows the words past Umbach. <laughs> exactly, but you have to sing them as loud as possible. Yeah. But it's, it's those yes. little things that make a relationship, you know, whether it's driving down the road and singing, belting out songs with your, uh, I guess, fiance at the time, she was in the book, um, the 90s pop that you didn't, you, you, begrudgingly don't want to admit you know the words to but you know that's that's the little things it's and i that's what that's another thing i wanted to portray in the book 
that, you know, love isn't this grand, grand thing. It's not one big act. Um, it's, it's a bunch of little things, you know, I say, I think I say in it, love is the sum of its parts. So all the little things combined. And that's, I think that's what Dan and Tina, that's what they are or, or were. Um, they were just your normal couple that fall in love and have a, a great, you know, working relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you working on now? I'm always nosy about the next thing. Uh, I'm, so I was working on a a novel that I was kind of getting burned out on because it's it might be close to a thousand pages by the time it's done. Um, wow! So I kind of had hit uh, yeah, I kind of had hit a mental roadblock with it where I was you know got four hundred pages or and in and I'm like thinking about the future and I'm like I didn't even cover this or that or this so I was like I I I gotta step away and that's when I wrote if I could have lived another day um so I gone back to that and I'm uh, I'm still facing the the fact that you know I am maybe not even at the halfway mark yet I'm almost 500 pages in but I'm currently working on that cuz that is the story I, I'm really proud of what what I have. It's just I, I have to get there, and knowing that it's going to be a journey, and then there's the whole rewrites and edits and talking about now. I'm just, I'm like, why did I? Why am I doing this <laughs> to myself? <laughs> Might it be a series? I mean, is is that something that would be possible? No, it's 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 just the fact that there's two different timelines in it. Um, like what's the the current the plot line that takes part in the present and a lot of my main character's lineage plays into the story so I have to cover all that and I go back almost over a hundred years so I have to cover a hundred years worth of uh, generation wow yeah that would be a lot to fit in when you write you tend to have um some like in Booth, there was there was time travel. In the Cool Kids, there was uh, kind of a fantasy element. But you also tend to write um, across genres in some ways. Um, and so, is that something that you prefer to do, or is it just the way the stories come to you and you you write you write them as they come? I just write them as they they come. Uh, I don't want to be pigeonholed um, to one genre because then I feel like people expect me to write one genre. And I think when you're writing just one particular type of story, you're going to run out of ideas and then force out things that aren't good. So if I like a horror idea, I'll write a horror idea, which I have plenty of those in my head. Um, if I want to write a tragic you know, story of loss, um, I'll, I'll write that, which I did. And it's just, so whatever pops in my head, I mean, my biggest influence is Stephen King, hence me writing a thousand-page book. Um, but he he writes. I mean, he's known as a horror writer, but he um, he writes so many different genres, and I'm glad that he's my favorite author because I I can see that, you know, I shouldn't have to worry about appeasing one group or thinking that only one kind of story will attract people to my, to my writing because I I don't think that. I think Booth is as strong as if I could have lived another day, just in very different ways. Okay, thank you for that. And you, you mentioned Stephen King, which made me remember a scene very early on in the book. Uh, Dan is in a college class, and there is um, another student in that class who is very, very vociferous about <laughs> not liking Stephen King. Um, <laughs> was that, I mean, just what was your, what what brought that scene on? Uh, I read a book called, I don't remember what it was called, but it was, a, it was a bunch of articles about Stephen King that people had written over time. And one of them was from a college professor who, um, I'm sorry, it was from an author who, while he was in college, 
professor went on this rant about how Stephen King isn't, you know, real true literature. And you hear that a lot. I mean, even Stephen King himself has, uh, you know, gone on how people say, like, he's not a real, you know, he's not a real author or literary author, at least. Um, so that was just, you know, in my head when I wrote that scene. Because uh, Dan, who knows nothing of literature, the only author he knows is Stephen King because he's Stephen King. And then, you know, that popped in my head, that that thing about, you know, people thinking that he's not a real literary author. So I just wanted to include it. Um, but nobody, actually, you know what? I had met people who, who, who mocked King. <laughs> Uh, it just kind of made me laugh because I know that you are a Stephen King fan. You know, I follow you on social media and I've seen some of your posts and everything. And, and we've talked about it before. So I was like, hmm, <laughs> there's, there's something there. Oh, no. I, I, I think King can be very literary. Um, yeah. And, and can be very deep. I don't think he's all people just because he writes um, bump in the night kind of stuff. Or he can be very uh, grotesque, you know with his writing mm -hmm. doesn't mean he's not you know can't write beautiful things right right let's go ahead and take our last break of the podcast but i do have to say maybe you've had a similar experience where you follow someone on social media or in my case you've spoken to them briefly a couple of times three times in this case and so you're like yeah i i, I know something about this guy um so the very little something and i know from his social media that he likes stephen king so what's up with this scene well i actually sometimes get to ask those questions and that is a pretty cool aspect of my job as a podcast host i know i ask some random questions sometimes but i get to so i am pretty happy about that Let's get to that that break that last break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking a little bit about what Jason has been reading. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple, it's simple, such a sad song. The one that... The one that we rely on to get us, to get us. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with Jason Pellegrini. We are talking about his new novella, If I Could Have Lived Another Day. So speaking of Stephen King and authors, what have you been reading since we last chatted? Uh, not as much as I'd like to. Um, but I currently am reading A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay, I think it is. I might have mastered his last name. I've also um, discovered my love for audiobooks. So right now I'm currently listening to East of Eden um, by Steinbeck, who is another one of my, my favorites. Steinbeck is, you know, talk about brilliant authors. He's freaking, uh, the way he writes just is non-comparative. You can't compare. You, you, um but I'm also I'm revisiting a lot on Audible because there's too many books to read, to read, to revisit books. So I've been doing that on Audible. Um, other than that, you know, I I try to read, you know, whatever. I think I read uh, Wanderers by Chuck Wendig recently. Um, I've been buying a lot of classics. Whether or not I get to, get to reading them is a, a different story, but I, I want to try to revisit a lot of classics that, you know, we had to read in, in school because I didn't pay attention to them when I should have been. I wasn't I, a very I good student. Um, <laughs> I'm actually doing something similar. I'm reading things that I feel like I should have been assigned in school um, and, and wasn't, so. 
Well, that's fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, okay. I seem to be buying. I've got to the point where I'm like, uh, I'm buying too many books and I'm not reading enough. But unfortunately, life gets in the way sometimes, and I come home and I, I read like two pages, and I, I wake up with a book on the floor, and I, I'm on the couch, but fell falling asleep somehow. Yep, I totally understand that. Here's my random question for you. Um, I do follow you on social media, and you post a lot of pictures of both books and the Funko Pop uh, characters. How many of those do you have? I believe I recently passed the 250 mark. Wow. That's that is... Some, some people. Oh no, I'm sure. I'm just, I'm just impressed that it's a, you know, it's still a, still an impressive collection. I think so. It goes <laughs> nice. uh, I recently moved, so my second bedroom, which is going to be my library slash office, was like in complete and utter disarray. Um, so finally, I've gotten around to like putting up the shelves and putting the books on the bookshelves and the pops up. And uh, I, I love the way it looks. With uh, I got my Buffy pops with my Buffy books, you know. There's a bunch of Stephen King pops that would go with my Stephen Kings. I got Pinhead for like five bark, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So they, like they complement they, they complement the books a lot. Yeah. So um, as I keep mentioning about social media, um, <laughs> you are on social media. So tell people um where they can find you on social media and if you have a website where they can find that um, if they want to be able to interact with you a little more. Well, you can find me on, on Twitter at J Pellegrini um, 1983 J just a letter, not J A Y. Um, I'm also on Instagram at Jason Pellegrini books. Um, same with Facebook. Uh, and uh, my website is www.jasonpellegrinibooks.com. Uh, you can order books there in which you would receive them signed. Um, and that's, that's really it. All right. And, you know, if people want to check out your uh, fabulous collection of books and Funko Pops, they can they can go to your your social media. Because <laughs> you, you take fun pictures, too. So that is that I also, fun. I also started just just started a uh, a Funko page called uh, JP at, uh, Collect Pops. <laughs> it's uh, it's nice. a startup, but you know I have so many of them. I'm like I might as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so Jason, we've talked about um, the new novella. We've talked about uh, you know a variety of different topics. But is there anything that we haven't covered that you wanted to bring up during our time together? Um. No, I mean, is there anything else? Um, there's always. I feel like this conversation was a little more uh, on on the bleak side, unfortunately, because of the. Yeah, it's never fun talking about cancer, but like like, like you said, um, it, it is a book of hope, um, and I want to reiterate that because I, I, it's something I'm very proud of, and uh, I've been getting I've been getting. Uh, such amazing feedback. I didn't. I didn't think of uh, the four of my books that just it was going to get the feedback that it's it's got the highest rating on Goodreads. Um. So you know, I didn't. I didn't expect it to get this kind of reaction, which is which is very nice because I. Uh, I don't know, it's always like hearing good things about me. <laughs> <laughs> That's always nice. Yeah, yeah, better than the than than the opposite. So. Uh, well, thank you so much. The book is out now. You can order it. And um, like you said, you can go to your, your website and have it personalized if you want to go that route. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Thank you once again to Jason for joining me to talk about this new novella. It really is um he he weaves it together so so beautifully and i know it's got some heavy topics to it but i very much enjoyed reading it it it's a quick read it's a novella it's only about 150 pages and so you get this glimpse into this couple's lives and it might at times feel a little heavy but 
it won't leave you feeling heavy. It will leave you maybe with some questions, um, maybe with some insight, but it will not leave you feeling heavy. So definitely check it out, especially if you have read his other, his other books. Thank you as always to you, my listeners. I so very much appreciate you. I hope that you will join me again on Tuesday or on Friday when I'm going to be talking about about some books that I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that I've never read before, uh, before this, this point in my life. And you'll just have to tune in to find out what those are. So join me on Friday. In the meantime, hope you've had a little bit of spring weather wherever you are, but I hope even more that regardless of the weather, you have plenty of time this week to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.